Hello, welcome back to uh, our school garden where I'm going to be having a look at um, dahlias. Now, I have to be honest with you, I was a bit late to the party when it comes to dahlias. I didn't, didn't really start growing them until I came to the school. Really, so if you have a look on my, um, on my channel, uh, Roger the Gardener or Roger Crooks on YouTube, uh, you'll see that I've done a bit of a survey um, with, I think, four different varieties of dahlias. We'd like to offer you, for no extra charge, a chance to vote uh, for your favourite. Um, and I don't want to influence you in any way, so maybe you better go and do that now before watching the rest of this video because I'm going to show you my favourite. And it's behind me now. It's one called Rebecca's World. So here we are, this is um, one called Rebecca's World. Uh, it's an uh, unusual dahlia in as much as you can get all sorts of shades of kind of magenta-y pinky red to kind of two-tone red and white together. And you can get some, I'm looking carefully now to see if I can find any, that um, have, are, which are predominantly white. Um, there's one just starting there, got a little bit of um, pink in them and the end result of this is that you get at any one time shades of pink white by color and um, it makes a very very attractive show uh, from I would say probably late June um, in a normalish year here in the UK we're in South Wales uh, right through until well until we get the first frosts uh, yes you do um, really if you want to, you can go off and you can take the um, dead flowers off, cut them off, and that will just encourage more and more uh, flower buds. I occasionally cut a nice vase full. That's a, look at that one there. That's just gorgeous. Um, uh, you can make a nice, uh, nice show in the, in the house with them. So we've just come round to the other side of this lovely drift of um, Rebecca's World. And uh, I just wanted to kind of point out to you that, well, there are a couple of challenges um, with, with dahlias. Number one is they're not classed in the UK as being fully hardy. The, the tubers, particularly in the first year or two, can be a little bit tender underneath the soil. Some people lift them every year uh, and put, store them uh, in dry, uh, dry sand or, or some sort of organic matter, dry, um, dry organic matter <clears throat> in a shed or a garage or a greenhouse maybe uh, I'm a bit too lazy <laughs> and I've left these in the ground for best part of 10 years now and uh, they die back every every winter and to help protect them there's two things that we've done first of all this ground underneath here is uh, there's some good soil some good composty soil here but beneath it if you dig down more than about a foot more than about 30 centimeters you'll find very kind of rubbly stony ground so very free draining and most of these plants that are a little bit tender will cope with cold temperatures so long as they're not sat in wet soil over the winter so because this soil drains rather well in the winter i believe that's one of the reasons why we've been able to leave them outside in very cold winters we had a minus eight here last winter um a few days of very cold weather in uh, in early winter kind of early december early mid-december so really good drainage stony soil underneath will increase your chances of uh, them surviving the winter if you don't want to lift them out of the ground every year um, i do sometimes if i remember put a little bit of a a, a mulch over the soil there once they've died back in the autumn we'll spread some um, some sort of organic matter over there um just to hold in some uh, some some heat yeah um the other thing to look out for is of course slugs and uh well when we mulch uh, sometimes that can encourage uh, slugs and um, we get a little bit of slug damage early on in the season um you can get all organic slug pellets now there's various kind of organic forms of slug control um we've got slow worms of course in our garden which is a very good way of controlling slugs we we also encourage hedgehogs we're just trying to allow ourselves to get a natural balance in our garden allow the odd um pest uh to kind of coexist with our with our gardens 
and we seem to be able to make it work so yeah so um if you do get a little bit of slug attack in the start of the season don't worry too much uh, if, you, if you spot the slugs you could pick them out but each year although we get some initial slug damage our plants grow through and we get a marvelous show like this from late june right the way through till sometime in october probably before we go let me just go right back around and show you the other side of uh, this um clump of dahlias where we've got a beautiful kind of bronzy um sunflower that uh, has uh, has come out look at this isn't that just gorgeous yeah i bet you tomorrow when the sun's out that'll be covered in bees um and in a month or two's time when we've got seed on there it'll be covered with uh wild birds and the odd squirrel helping themselves to the uh, the sunflower seeds anyway thank you very much for watching we'd love to hear your comments your suggestions your questions about um dahlias and anything else relating to gardening on the comment section on our youtube channel we'd love to hear from you speak soon thanks very much bye